welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the SMB CC64, the Vipera. It's a tier 8 Italian premium tank destroyer. It's located on the north spawn of Siegfried Line, and this one is under the command of Bublus of Olymp. Now, he's got a 120mm main gun, it's a five shot autoloader, and he's capable of doing 400 alpha. With the standard rounds, it will do 220mm of pen, and with the APCR, it's capable of 264mm of pen. And well, yeah, 515 for the HE with only 120mm of penetration. Now, the turret will turn 45 degrees either side of the center line, which means this tank destroyer can park itself and peek round corners and shoot at the enemy, just like any tank would. But the armor on the sides is well, weaker than the front. The front of the turret is 275 millimeters thick and the front of the hull is 210. So it's pretty strong. And it looks like he's headed for the corner to try and shoot at the enemy across the town square. And an enemy's already got there. It's a T832, that's the Terminator tank. The one with the, um, yeah, premium one. At least I think it is, anyway. Oh, that's a TS-54. That's the premium tank you get with uh, Watt Plus. Trying to get a shot. Now he's, he's trying to get it. Oh, now he just got stunned. Now the enemy RT is a GW Panther and an AMX 13 F3. And it looks like uh, we got stunned by one of the enemy RT firing into this corner. Now, normally they'd be about 20 seconds or thereabouts between shots, so he needs to think carefully. And that's the enemy RT firing again. And he just got hit by the GW Panther for 287 hit points. That, that was a 15 centimeter shell that just landed on top of him. So he does need to think about moving back or pulling back. Otherwise, he's going to get struck again. But it looks like the enemy's pulled back from that position. Oh, yeah, there you go. The enemy RT did fire within, within around 20, 25 seconds or so. So somebody's out in the field shooting in. Okay, five shot autoload. He's popped the reload. Standard reload time, 34.52 seconds. He's got 33.75. Now, this Super Hellcat's holding this corner, but look at that. There's a Dickamax up there committing suicide because he's gone way too deep into the enemy. He really doesn't have the armor to survive for very long, and I suspect he'll get wiped out very shortly. In fact, he has just gone down to the T-832, and we're now aiming to fire at the TS-54. He gets one shot in on us uh, for 248. He pulls back. Oh, that one bounced off the upper plate. It hit it at the wrong angle. But if he gets one in the right spot, Yes, he gets a pen. He got a high roll for 409. He bounced the shot for the T832. Instead, he goes for the T20 behind the guy and takes him out of the game altogether. Try to get a shot in there. That's better. And he wipes out the TS54. Pulls back. He actually is in full reload. But you see, the T832 doesn't know that. He thinks that the uh, that Bubbles is actually aiming or trying to jockey in for a right, another shot. So he isn't actually taking advantage of the fact that Bubbles can't shoot for another 12 seconds or so. In fact, it's been longer than that because, oh, and he got hit in the tracks. But any second now, Bubbles is gonna have five shots available to take out that 832 and he won't take him long to do it. In fact, the guy's now hiding because he knows he's in trouble. He obviously misjudged the reload and now Bubbles is going to pump these rounds into his lower plate. There's one. One more shot and he's going down. Or is it? No, it's going to be a couple more shots. Not. Well, there's one through the upper plate. Oh, he just took a big hit from somebody. And this will be a kill shot if he gets it. And he does. And that's potentially a high caliber. 20% of the enemy hit pool. Okay, so he's got two shells ready to go. But does he pop the reload? He really ought to then he'd have enough shells to, to deal with anything he encounters. Just saw an SU-152 over in the corner. Didn't get a shot on him. Oh, no, that's a nice target. That's a Scorpion. 
and he's pulled behind the bunker, so we can't do anything yet. I mean, he would have ideally have popped the reload, but instead he's decided to go with what he's got. And I think that's because he wants targets of opportunity, and he's found one, GW Panther. And he gets him with one shot, but then that is below the alpha of this gun, so not a problem taking him out. Well, he's going to use one of those rounds on the Scorpion. He's getting very close, and then he will have to reload afterwards. That's the RT on our team having a go. Hello, Mr. Scorpion. Takes the shot, low roll, 386, but he goes down instead to the IS-6B. Now, he did spot an enemy tank out in the distance. Oh, in fact, there's two out there. There's a NAS, two NAS horns. And there's another one. There's a BK-3002M and an AMX-13F3. So he could actually get a Pascucci's medal if he can kill the RT. But he's got more than enough targets, and he's getting the spotting for these as well. And there's a spotter badge. He's got over a thousand hit points of spotting. Now he's almost finished his reload. Five shells ready to go. Shouldn't take more than one shell each on those targets. That's horn first. One shot's all it takes. Now, can he get the shot on the AMX 13? Gotta wait that six seconds. Nope, didn't get it. Next shell. Now stay still. Let it settle. Yes! That's a Pascucci's, and that's his top gun. There's only two enemies left now. They've got a Pajetto 46 and a T-34 2GFT somewhere about. In fact, uh, the Pajetto was last seen near our cap area. We lost our RT. Or did we? No, we've still got an RT in the game. We lost the GW Panther on our team. The Eshi Wait is just behind us, actually. He's just come out of the cap to help us get the last few kills. Okay, the T-34 2GFT was last seen out in the middle of the field. But the BZ-176 has not seen him. And somebody's capping. Somebody's in the cap area. It could be either one of them. We don't know. But the SU-8 is following us out. There's the Progetto. He's behind us. Okay, so we now know it's the T-34-2 GFT that's in the cap. And the Progetto has come back to try and reset our teammate who's in the cap area at the moment. And he's probably going to get wiped out. That's unfortunate news. I think it's the VK... Oh, no, the VK's up north. It's the Striv M4257s in the cap. He's very low on hit points, so I don't think he's going to survive very long. Yeah, he's, he's trying to tell the Striv, get out of there, quick, before you get killed. The Eshi Waits doing a fantastic job trying to stop the Progetto getting close. He's still more than one shot for us. We've got a teammate coming up behind us, a BC-58, and yes, we just lost the Striv. He didn't follow our, our request, but now the Pajetto is a one-shot, so we can get him if we can get a shot on target. Now, we haven't been spotted yet, so we can creep up. Now we've been spotted. Okay, so he must have come up to the bushes to see where we were. And seeing as we're an autoloader, yeah, he's probably going to try and run away. You don't want to come face to face with a 120mm autoloader because he's only got a 90mm gun. Oh, just a fraction of a second late. I think the BZ-58 just put a round into the Pajetto but they can kill him. But he's eight hit points now. One more shot and it will be seven kills. They've killed the enemy at the other end. This is the last enemy. Oh! And the BZ-58 takes the kill that wins the game. And it's all over. Well, as you probably heard right at the end of the game, they he platooned with one of the teammates. And so there might be, yes, there is a Brothers in Arms involved. He got an ace tanker in the Vipera Bubbles. Very well done. He also got a demolition expert because he blew up one of the enemy tanks. The TS-54 popped his top when he pumped one round in, and he got a shellproof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, as well as a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, and a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got seven in this game. 
He did get the Pascucci's Mill because he killed both enemy RT, the GW Panther, and the AMX-13 F3AM. The Panther was an easy auto-aim, but he just blasted the guy at long range, and that 120mm shell did the rest. But the AMX-13 F3 was running away as fast as he could. Um, bless his cotton socks, he's not going to get very far, even though he's got a fast vehicle. Uh, yes, he had the problem that a tank destroyer sitting behind him, carefully aiming, uh, could take him out. He got a brothers in arms because he managed to get at least three kills and so did his platoon mate. And he also picked up a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and a top gun for getting at least six kills. And his win eight in that game, 8,379, which is super income standard and quite a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the high damage on this one was 5, 000, uh, 4,050. I almost got it the wrong way around. 4,050 hit points of damage went to Bublis. The second highest damage was the Progetto at the end of the game. 3,017 hit points. Yes, he was quite good. And the BC-176 also managed to get a Brothers in Arms because he was our platoon mate. He got 1,809 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, yep, it's Bublis. Six kills to him. But the Progetto 46 also managed a top gun and he got six kills as well. And three kills went to the BC-176, Jacko-17, um, who was our platoon mate in that one. When it came to base XP, the only player over 1,000 in this one was Bubless, and he got 1,544 base. The next highest scorer was the IS-6B on his team with 815. And then came his um, the bc 58 on his team with 755. 18 shots fired, 13 direct hits on the enemy, 12 penetrations. The difficulty he was having with it, really was with those two tanks, the T832 and of course the, um, the T832 because they were both being very difficult to hit um, right at the start of the game. But he actually did the right thing. He went around the houses so he could creep up on those guys um, and then shoot at them over that uh, rubble wall. And then he was able to get pinpoint accuracy on exactly where he wanted the shell to go. 4,050 hit points of damage, um, 360 of which were at long range. In fact, that was the shot on the GW Panther, the rest at close range uh, on the enemy. In fact, the only shot that he failed to penetrate it was the shot that he actually fired at the T-832. Um, Was it the 832? No, I think it was the t TS-54, he actually fired it right on the join of the upper and lower plates and the shell just ricocheted off at wrong angle. He also received eight hits from the enemy, only one of which actually penetrated, six non-penetrations and two hits by way of splash damage. 1,615 hit points of damage blocked by armor. It shows that the armor on the front of this vehicle is actually very strong. Four enemy vehicles were spotted, seven enemy vehicles damaged, six killed, and 1,213 hit points of damage assistance. That's the spotting assist. Now, he did earn a healthy profit in this game, 169,668 credits profit. He did get a reward for completion of a mission, and he picked up a personal reserve bonus as well. But that's a lovely score for a battle like this. Uh, but then he did do rather well to get the ace tanker. He also picked up a healthy amount of XP out of this game, uh, 4,864 as well. Just going to show that uh, if you know how to play it, you can generate vast amounts of credits and vast amounts of XP. So congratulations there to Bubbles. Lovely game in the Vipera. Um, I think it's actually one of the better tank destroyers on the Italian line. I suppose that some people would say the Minotauro is better, but uh, I think... Money for money, this one's better because, of course, it is a premium, so you're going to earn extra ex, uh, credits and XP every time you play it. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.